it's an honor for me to speak here at the beginning of this China 2.0 conference. China 2.0. Huh. So let's look back at the area where I come from. I was the chief scientist at Amazon.com, and I probably educated tens of thousands of people in China by being EMBA professor at Tsinghua and at Shanghai Zhao Da. And in those days, 10 years ago, it was clearly that people learned a lot from the United States, Web 1.0, where the company is in the center distributing information out. And of course, in a more political sense, there would be the government in the center which you know, puts its propaganda out. Then, here in the West, quite early on, Web 2.0 arrived. Web 2.0 is architecture of participation. Sometimes I call this me business, where the individual is in the center putting his or her stuff out. An example for this in China would be Sina Weibo. I actually was lucky to be the first outside investor into Xiaonei, into the Chinese Facebook clone, which then became Renren. And it's quite interesting to see what was similar and what was different. If you look at Weibo, for instance, there are no privacy settings the way we know them from Facebook, but it has a richness which Twitter is lacking. So it's very interesting to see how the tool aspect of me business, an ego system, if you will, has been morphed in China. Now, for Web 3.0, I think we have fallen behind of what we see in China. Namely, Chinese consumers, because in the Chinese culture, it's actually very difficult to know who to trust. It's very difficult to not have the danger of having fraud in some transaction in Taobao. Chinese consumers have much more of the we business connection, which is that they go social commerce, through their friends in order to figure out which merchant, for instance, to be able they can trust. Now, I would like to talk in the few minutes I have briefly about the definition of social data, give you two examples, then talk about a couple of insights into the minds. We talked hearts, but that was cut out. Wallets of social consumers, and then end with the ABC of social data, which I think is the reason why people do it. So there are two kinds of social data. One is the social graph. Who is connected to whom? For instance, telephone companies know who is calling whom, who is calling whom back, etc. For social commerce, as I said, particularly in the absence of trust, getting to that social graph is like the holy grail. Now, I'm giving you two examples of social data in the other sense, of data people knowingly and willingly, most of the time, create and share. And the example I'm giving you here is Shanghai geolocation via Google Latitude. So I have an apartment in Shanghai, up there, right in the top right there. And down there is a company I'm advising called TouchPal. So on the resolution of a few minutes, my Android phone and other data sources lead to, on a daily basis, where I am moving around in the world. And if you want to see where I'm right now, for instance, I publish that information. I socialize that information on weigen.com, my last name.com, slash itinerary. So at any given point in time, you know where I am and you know my travel plans. So touchpad I wanted to give you as an example of give data to get data. So touchpad provides when you, for instance, make a phone call with alerts that that number you might be calling might be a fraudulent number. Or in addition to that, it actually allows you to know what situation your friend who you're about to call is in. What is the cost of interrupt at that given point in time. So that's clear value TouchPal gives to the user. In exchange, they know the social graph. Second example, a trip to Hangzhou. There, to work with Alipay. And what we worked about is, what can they do with all the data they have, besides trying to reduce fraud? And one of the beautiful examples of Alipay is AA, going Dutch, meaning splitting the bill. 
clear value provided to the users, like if the three of us go out for dinner and maybe you don't have Alipay yet, I help you install it. And then we can each you know, uh, pay a third of the bill. And what does Alibaba know? What does Taobao know? What does Alipay know? They know that we are going out for dinner. Give data to get data. Now, it's a big world out there. And I boiled it down to something very sort of kindergarten-like, namely the ABC of big data. A, ladies and gentlemen, stands for approval. Why do people do things? People do things to get approval, to get that thumbs up around the world. If you look at posts, there are many more happy posts than unhappy posts. <laughs> That's the A. B. B stands for belonging, being part of something bigger than ourselves. What does it mean for that schoolgirl? What does she belong to? What does she want to belong to? Up there, Louis Vuitton. I gave a talk last year in November at Digital China in Shanghai. And the country manager of Louis Vuitton was in the audience. And at the end of the talk, he asked me, sir, you are not saying that we should publish the prices, that we should the prices of our goods on the web. And I said, don't worry, monsieur. They are there already. <laughs> About 80% of the conversations of the social data that people have about luxury brands on Sina Weibo are about prices. So A was approval, B wants belonging, and C is probably the most important one. C is about connecting. So I think one of the largest innovations which I've seen in the last year is Tencent's WeChat, which is just an amazing communication device, which I think changes the way the social norms how we deal with each other. So if you haven't downloaded yet, give it a try. We chat, we sing. On the other hand, sometimes this chatting actually is a little weird if it happens over dinner table, which you observe in Asia quite often. So to summarize, there is no question that, in my mind at least, China is leading now for a number of reasons. The most important one probably the big fraud problem, where lots of innovation has happened. My friend Wang Zhangshuo runs the Chinese equivalent of Craigslist, Bai Xing. And uh, the identity of most people is their phone number, which they, of course, hide in some ways, like in pictures. So here's an internal score for every post based on IP address, etc. what the probability is that that is a fraudster. And of course, he knows about other people where they're likely to be fraudsters. So if you want to respond, he gives the most likely fraudsters a little task, namely to check out an image of another fraudster and tell him what number is in that image. So it's just really smart how things get invented. I mean, the whole games with virtual goods because you can't sell the software, which actually leads to very different business models. What I see coming is, more and more social business models, not only like social commerce, but maybe that's coming from here first, like Airbnb, where given about who you are, you can get a room or not get a room, or Astrid, it's social to-do list, where if you want somebody to pick up your suit at the cleaners, you might have different criteria for somebody to put up your kid at the kindergarten. So we are seeing a culture shift. We're seeing here the social data revolution which goes pretty much everywhere, including this picture, which I found on the internet. I don't read Chinese, but it sounds interesting. If you want to know more, then I recommend check out the YouTube channel we have here, youtube.com slash social data revolution, or talk to me. I'm around all day. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>